Hey there, fellow theorists. Get ready, because today we're diving deep into Elbeth. Deep. We're breaking down Cubs. some seriously interesting One Piece theories. Yeah. This time we're looking at a video essay suggesting okay. that the legendary Norse god Odin um, might actually have a big role to play in the arc. Yeah. It's uh, it's a really interesting theory. Right. Especially given like One Piece's history of weaving in mythology. Right. And what makes this one so interesting, I think, is the level of detail. Yes. It's not just like throwing Odin in there for the sake of it. Right. The essay actually like connects specific events and characters we see in Elbeth to Norse mythology. Oh, okay. So it's, I like it. it makes some pretty convincing arguments. Yeah, let's unpack this a little okay. bit. So the essay really focuses on Luffy's arrival in Elbeth. Okay. Specifically, the giant raven, Mugen, uh -huh. that brings him there. Right. Remember how we were all kind of wondering about that name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, it might be a huge clue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the essay points out a connection between Mugen and Odin's ravens mm -hmm. in Norse mythology. Okay. Hugen and Munin. Right. Um, and they were basically Odin's like eyes and ears always flying around gathering information. Mm, okay. So the theory is suggesting that Mugen might serve a similar purpose in Elba. Mm -hmm. Perhaps even answering directly to Odin himself. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be wild. It would be very interesting. Especially since we've already seen some hints of like division among the giants themselves. Ooh. Like remember how Rode was fuming when he found out that Hajrudin joined Luffy's grand fleet? Yeah, absolutely. It's clear that not all the giants are on board with humans. No, they're not all happy about it. Right. That's a great point. I mean, yeah. Rode's reaction was very telling. Yes. I think he even said something like, giants who follow humans have lost their way. Right. Which is uh, yeah. pretty strong words. It is. It definitely points toward like a deeper conflict within Elba. Yeah. Possibly between, you know, factions with differing views on humans and their place in the world. Right. So could Road and those that share his view yeah. be aligned with a certain, like, powerful figure who might not be too keen on humans either? Potentially, yeah. Someone like Odin. That's exactly where the essay takes us. Okay. Yeah, if Odin is indeed a presence in Elbaf, mm -hmm. Rod and those who distrust humans could very well be part of his faction. Okay. Which adds a whole other layer to the power dynamics at play. It does. And speaking of Odin, there's another detail that adds even more weight to this theory. Okay. Remember how Loki the you know trickster god from Norse mythology right. is constantly referred to as a prince of Elbaf. Yes, and that detail always seems super important. Yeah, like it had to mean something beyond just a throwaway title. Exactly. Right. And that's where the essay really hooked me because uh -huh. they're saying that if Loki's a prince, yeah, well, there has to be a king somewhere. Right. Right. And who better to fit that role than Odin himself? All right, so we've got Mugen potentially acting as Odin's eyes and ears. Right. We've got a disgruntled faction of giants who might be following him. Potentially. And a very important title for Loki that hints at a larger power structure in play here. Yeah. It's starting to feel like there's real potential to this Odin theory. It's definitely interesting. Right. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, no. The essay goes even deeper, connecting the giants signature attack okay the spear of elbaf yes to odin himself oh man you know i love it when odo weaves those subtle mythology references oh yeah into attacks and things like that sure so what's the connection well in norse mythology odin is famous for his spear gunnir right a weapon said to never miss its target uh -huh. so the theory suggests that the giant's spear of elbaf could be like a tribute right. to Odin's legendary weapon. Okay. Further solidifying his influence on their culture and history. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, this is already blowing my mind and we're just getting started. Yeah. But before we jump into the next level of this theory, right. let's take a quick pause for our listeners to process all this amazing info. Yeah. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back. Back at it. We've laid out some pretty compelling evidence so far. Yeah. That points toward Odin having some kind of presence in Elbaf. Definitely. But this next part is where things get really interesting. Okay. What kind of role would Odin play in the story? Right, because just knowing he might be there right. doesn't tell us if he's friend or foe or no. something in between. Yeah. And that's what makes it exciting. Yes. 
The essay outlines a couple of different scenarios. Okay. Each with like huge implications for Luffy and the crew. Okay, I'm all ears. What's the first scenario? So the first scenario basically puts Odin as like the current king of Elbaf. Okay. But one who's not exactly like right. throwing a welcome feast for any pirate that washes up on shore. You know, he could be testing Luffy and the Straw Hats. Uh -huh. Putting them through trials. Okay. Challenges to prove their strength and their worth. I like it. Right. It really fits with those like core One Piece themes. Yeah. Of pushing past your limits and really earning your victories. For sure. Like a test of strength and character. Exactly. And think about the narrative possibilities there. Yeah. We could see Luffy facing like challenges designed to push him to his absolute limit. Right. Forcing him to tap into you know, new depths of his halaki. Yes. Or master new applications of his devil fruit powers. This is giving you like training arc vibes. Totally. Remember how he trained with Rayleigh during the time skip? Oh yeah. To learn how to control his halaki? Right. I feel like this could be like that, but on another level. Absolutely. And imagine the battles too. Oh yeah. If Odin is like pulling the strings behind the scenes, yeah. we could see some crazy stuff. Luffy going up against opponents and obstacles unlike anything he's ever seen before. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Okay, so that's the first scenario. That's the first one. What about the second one? As compelling as that is, the second one the essay presents is even more intriguing. Okay. What if Odin isn't the current king? Okay. But a fallen king? Ooh. What if someone took his throne? Don't tell me, Loki. You got it. The essay suggests that Loki, being the trickster god that he is, right. has usurped Odin's throne. Oh man. Perhaps even manipulating events to turn the giants against their former king. Oh, that's such a classic power struggle. Oh, it's perfect. And it would be right up One Piece's alley. Totally. Think about it. Yeah. Luffy and the Straw Hats. Right. Joining forces with this fallen king to take down a corrupt ruler. It's practically a One Piece story arc in a nutshell. It's perfect. Right. It taps into that recurring theme of fighting for what's right. Yes. Even if it means siding with someone unexpected. And remember Rhodes' whole thing about not liking giants who follow humans? Oh yeah, absolutely. What if that's Loki's influence? It could be. Twisting the truth to maintain that power. Exactly. That adds a really cool layer to this. It would make it so much more complex. Luffy would not only be fighting for Elbaf's freedom, but also to restore the rightful king. Right. And expose all of Loki's deception. Exactly. And speaking of revelations, there's another layer to this whole Elbaf arc that we can't ignore. Right. The potential connection to Ragnarok. Yes. And the secrets of the Void Century. Ah, Ragnarok. Back, 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 for those who might not know, yeah. essentially the Norse apocalypse. Yeah, right. A cataclysmic event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. involving, you know, a great battle and the end of the world as they know it. Right. A lot of fans think that elements of Ragnarok are bound to play out in the Elbaf arc. It feels very likely. Especially with all the, you know, heightened states we've got going on. It does. And the potential for global conflict. Okay, and that brings us to the question that's been on everybody's mind. Okay. Since we first heard whispers of Elbaf. What happened to that massive library of ancient texts oh. that the giant Saul oh. saved from Mohara? Right. The one with all the forbidden history about the Void Century? What happened to it? Where is it? Where did it go? What if, and hear me out, okay. what if that library ended up in Odin's possession? Oh, now that would be something. Right. That would explain a lot. It would tie into the Ragnarok prophecy. Right. It could potentially give us the secrets behind the ancient weapons. Oh, wow, well, yeah. The true nature of the sun god, Nika. Right. Maybe even some stuff about Joy Boy's will. The possibilities are really endless. Right. And on top of that, yeah. we can't forget about the biggest wild card. Oh, no. Emu. Right. That mysterious figure. Yeah. Shrouded in shadow, controlling the world government. Right. If the secrets of the Void Century are in danger of being revealed, yes. you can bet Emu will be taking a personal interest. Oh man, Fight. we're talking about a clash of titans here. Oh yeah, it's huge. Luffy and the Straw Hats. Yeah. Potentially with a fallen king at their side. Right. Going up against the full might of oh, the world government. The stakes are so high. With the fate of the world in the balance. It's almost too much to handle. It's crazy. Um, it's almost too epic to imagine. It really is. It's gonna be wild. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, okay. there's one more detail from this essay that I found super interesting. Okay, what's that? Remember that sleeping gas? Yes. That road used on the straw hats when they first got to Elbaf? Yes. 
that always kind of struck me as strange. Yeah. Because yeah. it seems a little too advanced. Right. For a place like Elbaf. Yeah, it's a good point. You know? It is a little strange. Which makes you wonder, yeah. could Elbaf be hiding more? Right. What if they've got technology or knowledge that's been lost to the rest of the world? Right. Maybe remnants from the void century itself. Oh, man. Right. What if they hold the key to technology and power that rivals the world government? It's definitely a possibility. Right. Especially <laughs> when you think about the fact that Elbaf has never been conquered. Right. Never been subjugated. It's wild. With every layer we peel back, Elbaf just keeps getting more and more complex. They're more interesting, too. It really does. But I have to ask, yeah. what does it all mean? What does it mean? If these theories are true, what kind of impact could this have on, like, the future of One Piece? Well, if Elbaf truly holds the key to unlocking the secrets of the Void Century, yeah. the implications are massive. Right. I mean, it could literally rewrite history as we know it. Wow. Exposing the world government's, you know, darkest secrets, right. potentially sparking a revolution right, yeah. that could change the world. We're talking about a paradigm shift for the entire world of One Piece. This is huge. It's huge. But hold on, I have one more question. Okay. If Elbaf is this important, yeah. why haven't we seen Shanks there yet? Ooh, that's a good question. Right. He's always got his finger on the pulse well, in all these like world-changing events. He does seem to know what's going on. Where does he fit into all of this? Right. That's the million berry question, isn't it? Where does Shanks fit into all of this? Yeah. He's got to be aware of Elbeth, especially if it's this important. Right. You know, if it really does hold the secrets to the Void Century, yeah. he's got to know. It wouldn't be like him to be out of the loop on something this big. Right. Maybe he's biding his time. Okay. Waiting for the right moment. Right. He's always been a bit of a strategist. Right. Oh. Prefers to kind of operate from the shadows a little bit. Right. Influence things subtly. Right. It's totally possible that Shanks is already involved in Elba in some way. Okay. Maybe even working behind the scenes. Okay. To like, you know, support a side or protect certain secrets. Oh man, the intrigue never stops. Okay, but let's bring this back to Luffy for a sec. Okay. If Odin really is involved in all of this, yeah. and He's not exactly like welcoming the straw hats with open arms. Right. What does that mean for Luffy's goal? Well, that's the thing. Right. Luffy just wants to befriend the giant. Right. Experience their culture. Right. You know, gain their support in becoming pirate king. Right. But if Odin, as king or, you know, even falling king, right. presents an obstacle. Right. Luffy's going to need to adapt. He is going to need to figure something out. Yeah. Luffy's all about facing challenges head on. He is. But he's also learned that like strategy and alliances are important. Oh, for sure. We've seen him team up with some pretty unlikely allies. Yeah. Do you think that he could find common ground with Odin? It's possible. Even if their goals don't really line up? I mean, Luffy has a way of seeing the good in people. Right. Even when it's not obvious to anyone else. Right. So if Odin really is driven by, you know, good intentions, okay. even if his methods are a little unconventional, right. Luffy might be the one to bridge that gap, make that connection. I can see it now. Luffy with that big old grin. Right. Somehow convincing Odin to join his cause, or at least work together. Team up. It wouldn't be the first time Luffy's like, charmed his way into an alliance. Exactly. And think about how well that would fit thematically. Right. I mean, we've seen Luffy challenge authority figures before. So many. Right. Arlong, Enol, Dolph Flamingo. Yes. So if Odin is a good guy. Right. Who's been, you know, betrayed and manipulated by Loki. Right. It would make perfect sense for Luffy to fight for him. Okay, this is huge. Talk about an epic showdown. Oh, man. Yeah. Luffy versus the world government, the fate of Elbaf, the secrets of the Void Century, all in the balance. It's gonna be good. I am so ready for this arc to unfold. It's gonna be amazing. You know what this whole discussion has got me thinking? What's that? What if the secrets in Elbaf yeah, aren't no. just about history okay. or lost technology? Yeah. What if they tell us about, like, the world itself. Okay. Maybe even the One Piece. Oh, wow. Like, what if it's even bigger than we thought? Right. What if it redefines everything? Yes. It would be fitting. It would. For a place like Elba. Okay. Well, one thing's for sure. What's that? We are in for one heck of a ride. We are. Elbaf is going to be a game changer. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what happens. Keep your eyes peeled for those clues. Yes. <laughs> Any little hint that Oda drops. Exactly. All right. Well, this has been awesome. It has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us on this wild ride through Elbaf and Odin and all of that. Of course. Until next time, keep theorizing and keep the spirit of adventure alive. Absolutely.